Today I'm going to be taking a look at how much CPU is needed for a NAS to work well. While there's lots of many other tasks a NAS can accomplish, I just want to take a look at how much CPU Samba requires to copy files over the network. Samba is used on Linux and similar systems for using the SMB or CIFS protocol file share, which is most commonly used with Windows systems, but also works with almost everything else that's in use today, so it's the most common NAS file share. And since NAS units can come from anything from like a dual core atom based system today to sometimes like dual Xeons, it would be nice to know kind of what scale it takes for what given network speeds. And I did a bit of testing on 1 gigabit and 10 gigabit Ethernet to see what level of CPU was needed. The first thing I did when testing to get a ballpark number was start up a testing using virtual machines. I had a Proxmox system that I used for this with a SSD boot drive, 128 gigs of RAM, a Xeon E52643 V4 Broadwell E6 core at 3.4 gigahertz, and it was running the latest version of Proxmox at this time with no other VMs. I set up two VMs on it for testing connected over the virtual internal network using virt.io networking drivers. And as the test client, I had a Windows 10 VM using Crystal Disk Info. And as the server, I had a copy of Debian 11 with the latest version of Samba installed and just setting up a basic share with all the default settings. I did not do any tweaking for performance in any of these tests. The initial CPU setup, which was using four virtual CPUs in the VM, I got about 1700 megabytes per second read and write in Crystal Disk Mark. And then I slowly turned down a knob of how much CPU was allowed in Proxmox. So this starts at four virtual CPUs, I turned it to one virtual CPU with no performance difference, likely because it wasn't very well threaded, and then I turned it all to 0 0.01, which is equivalent to about 1% of the CPU that it could use. And I got about the same performance. So here's a screenshot of the performance on all the CPU versus almost 1% of it. And that's almost the same, which really surprised me, because I thought 1% of a fairly modern chip would be extremely slow and have no way of getting reasonable performance. And I thought there had to be an error there. So I started doing a little bit of testing. I ran Sysbench on there, and here's some of the Sysbench scores, and they scale fairly well with the amount of CPU I give it. So that was expected. I took a look at HTOP to get a little bit of CPU process monitoring, and in the virtual machine, the CPU usage of Samba did go up, as I lowered the amount of CPU it could use, and I took a look at the host CPU utilization, and on the VM it never went over kind of the 1% that I expect, so nothing seemed weird. So I was just guessing it's something weird with virtual machines and maybe how the virtual network drivers have a much lower overhead than a real network card. So then I moved to a different platform for testing. And this new testing platform was based off of a NVIDIA 780i board with two gigs of DDR2 RAM, a Q94, this filled the 1 gigabit Ethernet connection and had about expected performance for 1 gigabit LAN of about 118 megabytes per second, which is pretty much the fastest real world performance you can get on a 1 gigabit network connection. I then wanted to turn down the CPU on there a little bit to see if it would make a difference, so I turned the multiplier down from its normal 8 to a minimum of 6 that this board supported with no performance difference, and then I wanted to go even lower. So I swapped the CPU out from my Core 2 Quad to a 3.0 GHz Pentium 4 630. Still pretty much no difference. Basically filled the 1 gigabit network connection. And at this point I thought something weird was going on with Crystal Disk Mark, and maybe something about it wasn't showing the data right, because I was kind of surprised that a Pentium 4 from 2005, that was even relatively low end for its time, could keep up with full gigabit. So I did a few other tests using programs other than Crystal Disk Mark and just started copying files over the network, making sure they were big enough to fill any caches and it would just fill gigabit, which really surprised me. So I decided all I could do now is give it a faster network speed. And then I got about 500 megabytes per second read and about 250 write on a Pentium 4 on a 10 gigabit network, which I think is pretty darn impressive. And I was actually surprised how fast it could copy on a basically default config and just, I threw a RAID 0 drives and a 10 gigabit NIC at it and looked at what type of performance I could hit. So now I decided to put that Core 2 Quad back in there and see how much better performance I'd get. And it was better, especially in randoms, but not that much better. I would think that the CPU performance difference between a Pentium 4 and my Core 2 Quad would be much bigger. So I tried some other chips I had laying around. One of these other chips was an E3300, which is a fairly low-end Intel Core 2 based on um, Pentium at that time. 
and it was getting results that were between the Pentium 4 and the Core 2 Quad, as I'd expect. And then I threw a E8400 at it, which was a later generation um, Core 2 Duo, but it was clocked higher than the Q9450. And since Samba seems to be mostly single-threaded, it actually performed even better, getting about 750 megabytes per second read and only about 340 megabytes per second write. And also had the best performance of any of the Core 2 Quad or Pentium 4 systems they had yet. So then I decided to kind of turn up the knob on that E8400 a little bit and overclocked it all the way up to 4.25 gigahertz. And I got the speeds all the way up to 830 megabytes per second read and about 350 write which is pretty impressive for a chip that old, I'd say, and a reasonable gain from overclocking, but definitely not a scaling linear with clock speed. So there's something else limiting it there as well. And Random I.O. though also scaled a little bit, not as much, but Random I.O. was improving as well as I turned up the clock speed. I tried tuning a few other things, and I couldn't get faster than about that 830 megabyte per second on that board. So I'm guessing that could have been due to some other limitation, perhaps memory, perhaps how the I.O. on that board is laid out, but that's what I was limited to. So I threw another system at this for testing, and in this case it was a dual OGA 2011 system with a Intel Xeon E5 2680V2 chip on it. And I made sure to lay this out in a way so that all the PCIe devices will be connected to one CPU to reduce any NUMA links. And I got roughly 1170 megabytes per second transfer speeds, which is pretty much the limit of 10 gigabit networking. But these results in general were just really odd to me and a bit different than some of the other ones I think I've kind of ran into and seen in some general wisdom. And I think a lot of it's due to this, I threw a really fast drive situation. So in all of these drives, I had solid state and in all the real hardware, the non-virtual machines, they were running essentially eight SATA SSDs in RAID 0. And also, all of these boards had pretty fast bus kind of speeds. So my Intel Xeon had a very high amount of PCIe lanes and was good at copying data. And the um, Pentium 4 and the other LGA 775 test benches I was running had a pretty beefy later chipset that I was using. I tried to find a different system they had that would allow me to use a slower CPU but still have enough I.O. bandwidth. And I really couldn't find one. Because once I start going back to kind of early Pentium 4 or late Pentium 3 era stuff, I didn't have anything that I could easily get access to that could put like multiple SSDs in RAID 0 and a 10 gigabit NIC and the board and the other interconnects there not be the limitation. So the only real conclusion I can come up with after doing all this testing was that if your system is fast enough to support the amount of I.O. needed to copy the files from the disks over to the network, the CPU that you put in that system will likely be able to handle the amount of CPU processing it will require just for Samba alone. Now there's still a lot of other reasons to want something other than like a Pentium 4 for running NAS use. First of all, power consumption, newer stuff has gotten a whole lot better, and also I.O. While this 775 board was pretty beefy for its day and has quite a bit, newer systems completely dwarf it in the amount of I.O. and disks you can put on it, so if you want to put lots of drives, a newer board will likely do better. And also a new system will probably likely pay for itself in the power savings alone. And this kind of makes me think when I see Synology NAS units with like an atom based seller on or something like that, those are perfectly fine for filling up one gigabit network copies. Now if you're using lots of clients or running other backup programs or maybe running compression on it, those will need lots more CPU and should think about that. But Samba alone is kind of almost for me, you don't even have to think about it CPU usage wise because other things will limit you before Samba is going to become a CPU usage limitation. Let me know if you've ran any testing on systems and how much CPU is needed for Samba to copy files over the network, and also how much your CPU usage has looked like copying things over the network. But it's kind of interesting for me, and I was actually surprised how well old chips did for just basic file copies. I didn't think a Pentium 4 can hit 500 megabytes a second.